tahu po tahu po Hello, si Father Boss Legaspi po ito. Welcome to our Katok video series. Mga must-watch videos po ito for all. Katok is short for Katolikom Talakayan at Kwentuhan. Kuntahan lang po ha, walang inuman. At medyo masipag din po akong sumagot sa mga tanong ninyo tungkol sa buhay-buhay. At lalo na tungkol sa buhay para ng palatayang Katoliko. You can shoot me your questions sa facebook.com slash itanong mo kay Father. I hope to get to know you and hear from you soon. For now, welcome to this Katok episode. Gusto ko muna magsimula sa isang study na isinagawa noong pong 2016. Naniniwala akong hindi pa rin naman gaano nagbabago ang results ng study na ito ngayong 2020 na. Siguro ang nagbago lang ay yung mga millennials noon ay medyo nagkaedad na ngayon. A recent issue of our Sunday Visitor profiled some eye-opening research in an article entitled, Young People Are Leaving the Faith, Here's Why. It was an analysis of two national studies, conducted by the Center for Applied Research in the Apostolate, to provide insight into the reasons, why a third of millennials, who were raised Catholic, reject the faith of their parents as young adults. In the CARA studies, millennials are defined as those born in 1982 or later. The majority of the young adults, who responded with comments on the research, indicated that they left their faith for science concluding that Catholicism cannot be reconciled with science, at the high school and university level. They report finding little in the Catholic presentation of faith, that challenges that view. The article included a sampling of the responses behind their decisions. Here are some of them. As I learn more about the world around me, and understand things that I once did not, I find the thought of an all-powerful being, to be less and less believable. Catholic beliefs aren't based on fact, nothing can be disproved, but it certainly should not be taken seriously. I realize that religion is in complete contradiction with a rational and scientific world, and to continue to subscribe to a religion would be hypocritical. As I started to enjoy math and science more, I realized the discrepancy between religion and science. Catholicism especially did seem to clash fairly well. Faith no longer fits into what I understand of the universe. In addition to the CARA results, a recent Pew Research Center survey showed that we are losing an additional 1% of young people, starting at about age 10, every year to unbelief. These surveys should be taken quite seriously. We, as Catholic parents, should teach the Catholic faith to our families, centered on our love for and devotion to the Holy Eucharist in order to prevent young people from leaving the church. Hmm, hindi raw ba mag-reconcile ang science at Catholicism? Ganun ba? Sa mga nagdaang panahon, nadebunked na ng Catholic side ang myth ng hidwaan nito with science. Baka hindi natin nalalaman na ang popular na Big Bang Theory ay nanggaling sa isang Catholic priest, si Reverend Monsignor Georges Lametre. Hindi totoo na magkakontra ang science and faith. Ang problema lang ay kung mayroong claim ang science tulad ng claim ni Stephen Hawking, sumalangit tawa siya, ano yung claim ng scientist na ito? Sabi niya, scientists now believe that we know enough about the universe to know that the universe doesn't need a creator. Well, hindi naman lahat ng scientists ganyan ang claim. Bakit hindi katanggap-tanggap ang statement na yan? Kasi ayon sa Philosophy 101, imposibleng claim yan. Bakit? Kasi science is an inductive discipline. Anong ibig sabihin? Ganito. Noong 1961, the Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin he was the first human launched into space. When he returned to Earth, meron daw siyang simpleng message. Ano yun? Sabi niya, I looked and looked and looked but I didn't see God. 
ang Kremlin propaganda poster na lumabas featured an image of this cosmonaut floating in space at ang slogan nila there is no god ang induction ay nagsisimula sa facts then we draw conclusions based on the facts that we have Our conclusions may be correct or they may be wrong. Tama naman siguro ang general conclusion ni Gagarin kung ang pagbabatayan lang ay ang kanyang maling paniniwala na ang Christian God is just one of the physical beings out there. Pero mali ang premise niya, kaya mali ang conclusion. Parang yung observation daw ng isang alien sa Earth. Sabi nung alien, This swimming creature is called a fish. This man creature swims. Therefore, humans are a genus of fish. Ngek, dangerous siyang ganyan mag-isip. Isa pang maling induction technique. Si Pedro ay nag-aral tungkol sa counter-terrorism techniques under Professor Mang Ambo sa UP. Si Pedro ngayon ay hinihinalang terorista. Kung kay Mang Ambo nanggaling ang terorismong kaalaman ni Pedro, ergo, terorista rin si Mang Ambo ayon sa panukalang anti-terrorism. Nako, patay tayo dyan. Maling logic, maling conclusions. Gera patani ang ending. Pero, balikan natin si Hawking. Sabi niya kasi, we know enough the universe. Based on what we know, it does not need a creator. It does not need a god sa madaling salita. Teka, ambitious yata at mali ang premise na ganyan. We certainly do not know everything about the universe. Kasi kung ganon, tapos na ang lahat ng scientific explorations, di ba? We don't even know if we know everything about the universe. At hindi natin malalaman laman kung kailan magiging ganap ang kaalaman natin tungkol sa universe because scientists don't know what they don't know until they have discovered it by observation gets nyo? that's the problem of science how can you claim that we know sufficiently enough about the universe now to know that it doesn't need a creator. Alam nyo, sabi tuloy ng isang pari si Father Robert Spitzer, a Jesuit, nakadebate ni Hawking. That is an impossible claim. Parang self-refuting claim. Ika nga, ano ba yung self-refuting claim? Halimbawa, sasabihin kong, I am a liar. Okay, so are you telling the truth that you are a liar? Isipin mo ngayon yan. Sabi ko nga, I am a liar eh. When you imply that the only valid truth is a scientific truth, that claim itself is not a scientifically validatable claim. When you imply that the only legitimate knowledge is the knowledge derivable from the scientific method, it's called scientism. Okay, ang tanong, paano ka nag-conclude ng ganun? Anong scientific method ba ang ginamit mo para maging ganyan ang conclusion mo? Gets nyo ba? Ang idea na yan, espoused by scientists like Hawking and others, was not derived from a scientific method. Maaaring galing yan sa isang philosophical intuition, but certainly not science. Kaya self-refuting ang claim na yan. Science cannot make a universal claim. It can only make a factual claim, which is conditioned by the space and time coordinates of your observations. Pag-ingat tayo mga kapatid kasi palaging nalang pinag-aaway ang science and faith ng mga proponents ng scientism at ang medium nila, internet. Kaya mag-iingat tayo. Tandaan natin ito. Almost every major founder of the scientific method was a devoutly believing religious person. Tulad nila Descartes, si Newton, si Copernicus, or even Galileo. These founders of the scientific method did not see a warfare between science and faith. Okay, introduction ko lang po yan. Kasi may nagtatanong sa akin yan sa FB Messenger. Noong 2007, mayroong conference sa Mexico City tungkol sa science and faith. Tamang-tama, di ba? Isa sa mga speakers ay si Dr. Ricardo Castanion Gomez. Siya ay isang Bolivian doctor in clinical psychology. Siya ay atheist for 44 years. Naging Catholic lamang noong 1992 when he started investigating a mystical phenomena through the urging of then Cardinal Bergoglio. Of course, now Pope Francis. Pakinggan natin ang excerpt ng kanyang talk kaugnay ng isang Eucharistic miracle sa Buenos Aires noong 1996 at kaugnay ng kapistahan ng Corpus Christi. I was called by the Cardinal of Buenos Aires. I was called because in Buenos Aires, There is this new trend that certain people receive the communion with their hand. 
Somebody dropped the host, and since the host was dirty, he didn't want to pick it up. Consecrated. Somebody told the priest. The priest picked it up and put it in a vessel with water, and he lets it sit in water, so that it can dissolve. After five or six days of being in the tabernacle, they opened the tabernacle and noticed that instead of being dissolved, it had some red stains, in different shapes. They noticed that the stains grew in the following days. That was when they invited me to take a sample and find out what it was all about. I went to North America, to a lab in California to take these samples. I didn't tell them that this comes from a host. Then they analyze. What were the results? Doctor, the sample you brought us is a muscle from the heart, muscle from the myocardium of the left ventricle. That was the first result. We've been working on these analyses since 1999, but a couple of months ago, we discovered that there was this great expert in cardiology, pathology and biochemistry. He's the only professor who has written a book on how to know of what caused a person's death when the heart had been wounded. So he is a very famous professor, Frederick Suja Bay. We gave him the samples and he said, this person that had this heart must have been very wounded, because in his heart it shows that he must have been so beaten up, he must have been tortured. He did not know this was a host. Then he said, but there is something you need to explain. How is it possible that while I was studying this sample, the sample was moving, it was beating. So you explain to me, how did you take out the heart of a dead man and take it alive to me to my laboratory in New York? Professor, this is not what you think. This is a consecrated host that started to bleed. Imagine me telling this man that this is from a piece of wheat that turned into blood. It coagulated and now it is a muscle from the heart. I've been studying this sample since 1999. It's been more than five years that I have the sample in my possession. After 15 minutes, blood cells die. In the 13th century, another priest in Orvieto, Italy, doubted Christ being present in the Holy Eucharist. And while he was doubting whether Christ was present or not, the corporal he was using was filled with blood. But something interesting happened here, because the blood dripped into the altar, and the blood fell on the floor. And if you go and see it, you can see how the blood penetrated the marble floors. So the blood comes out, drips and penetrates. Because of this experience in the 13th century, Pope Urban IV, who is close to Orvieto, traveled to this place to see the miracle. Then he asked Thomas Aquinas to make and celebrate a mass and a ritual to establish the Corpus Christi celebration. So you must know that the Corpus Christi celebration was born from a Eucharistic miracle. Itong testimony na ito ni Dr. Gomez ay isang pagpapatunay na ang scientific method does shed light to our faith and not crush it. Pambihira, no? Sabi ng isang doktor, this sample was moving. It is beating. Alam nyo mga kapatid, sapat na para sa atin yung sinasabi ng Panginoon sa consecration. This is my body. This is my blood. And we believe. But this unbelieving, intelligent generation is not convinced. At katulad ng ginawa ng Panginoon kay Tomas, just so that he may believe, ipinakita niya at ipinahipo niya ang kanyang mga sugat sa kamay at tagaliran. Wow! A very humbling experience. As if hindi pa sapat siya ay nag-alay ng kanyang buhay. Sinundo pa niya ang kababawan ng kanyang alagad. Ganito rin ang katunayan ng mga milagro ng Eucharistia. Sinusundo tayong mga nag-aalinlangan, nag-aatubili at nagdududa. Salamat sa scientific method ni Hawking. Meron Diyos. Meron Creator who reveals Himself to us and gives Himself to us daily. So, ano ba ang new normal na inaasahan sa atin ng Panginoon? Number one, a new norm of respect and adoration through our outward Sunday garments. Of course, kapatid, you can do better than just wearing your undergarments to the king's party. Be prudent naman. 
be modest, be intelligent. Pag may kasal nga, posturang postura ka eh. Ano ba akala mo sa Sunday mass picnic, family bonding lang? Palagi na lang ganyan eh. Pag Sunday, merong makikita ka na naka-shorts, naka-sando. Subukan mo kayo pumasok sa Malacanang na nakaganyan, papapasokin ka kaya. Nahihaya ka naman sa Diyos. Hindi ka naman nagpupunta sa Walt Disney program eh, na ang pinanonood mo ay cartoon characters. Jesus is alive. His heart beats and pulsates. Honor Him at least outwardly. The second is the new norm of Sunday participation. We can do better than just being mechanical in our participation in the Mass. You know, let us be personal. Bring yourself to a personal, loving relationship with God through prayer. The third is the new norm of behavior and attitude. You certainly can do better than just this. Kasi simba pa lang, nakikipag-away ka na kagad sa parking area. Ano ba yan? Nakakahiya ka sa Diyos, di ba? Kung hindi ka nahihiya, mahihiya-hiya ka naman. At kung mahihain ka namang sobra, bawas-bawasan mo naman yan. Kaya tuloy hindi mo makorek-korek yung kabarkado mong walang galang eh. Kasi nahihiya ako eh. Ilagay mo sa ayos ang pagkamahiyain mo naman, naman. Pang-apat, new norm of speaking. Simpleng logic lang ito. We receive the living word of God in our tongues. Kung merong unang parte ng katawan natin ang pinababanal niya, ayan ay ang ating mga dila. Diyan siya kasi mas matagal. So pwede ba, let us not desecrate the living word through gossips, rash judgments, lies, and bad words. Okay? Naniniwala man akong tayong mga Pinoy, we have the best discipline and disposition To remember, believe, and live the Eucharist. At bakit ko nasabi yan? Kasi we are indeed a Eucharistic people. If ever there is one great trait of the Filipino we can speak of, it is the Filipinos being Eucharistic. The marks of Eucharistic spirituality are our jewels in the rags. The Eucharist is a celebration of joy. We Filipinos are the second happiest people in Asia next to India. And we are the most optimistic people in Asia, having a positive outlook on life in general. When most of the world's citizens are worried and fretful, we Filipinos, have joy and peace. The Eucharist is a celebration of the community. The Filipino has a sense of community, a sense of family. Filipino Christians, here and abroad, love to stay together, closely. Almost everywhere in the world, where there is a Catholic Church, There you'd find Filipinos if not singing in the choir, they just sit together, during Sunday Masses. We Filipinos, are a family related by faith. The Eucharist is a celebration of love. Our love for God is so deep. And we are famous around the world for our love for the Blessed Mother. We call her Mama Mary and Mahana Ina, or Beloved Mother. We are our love celebrating people. Life, for the Filipinos, is relationships. The Eucharist is a celebration of our mission. The Philippines is a Catholic nation, the only such nation in Asia. And this wonderful country exports missionaries around the world. As God touches us through the Eucharist, we are a touching loving people too. And we are not afraid to show it. We almost inevitably create human chains with our perennial Agbai, Hawakamai, Yakap, Kapit, Bizig, and Kalong. The Eucharist is timeless. Filipinos are timeless too. Except on very formal or official functions, we still measure time, not with hours and minutes, but with feeling. Our appointments are defined by umaga, tanghali, hapon, or gabi. A Filipino event has no clear-cut beginning or ending. For example, the Filipino Christmas is not confined to December 25th. It begins months before December and extends up to the first days of January. Notice too, how we say goodbye to guests. We say goodbye, in the comedor, goodbye in the sala, by the house door, by the stairs, by the gate, and then, saying goodbye again just before taking the jeep. Governed by timelessness, we show how to find more time to be nice, kind, and accommodating. The Eucharist is spaceless. Filipinos are spaceless as well. As in the concept of time, Our concept of space is not numerical. We will not usually express expanse of space with miles or kilometers but with feelings in how we say, Balayo, or, Balapit. Alongside with numberlessness, Filipino space is also boundless. Indigenous culture did not divide land into private lots. 
but kept it open for all to partake of its abundance. For example, look at the interior of the Baha'i Kubos or rooms in one. The receiving room is the sleeping room, is the kitchen, is the dining room, is also the chapel, or the way parlor, depending on the time of the day, or the needs of the moment. Also, notice how provincial folks dry their rice grains on the highways, or how the religious folks commandeer the streets for processions and parades. Filipinos eat, sleep, chat, socialize, nearly everywhere. Spacelessness can be unlawful, and may really be counterproductive at times. But it is also just another manifestation of our spiritual and communal values. It counterbalances humanity's greed, selfishness and isolation. We Filipinos, can easily relate with God's gift of the Eucharist because of the many inherent and acquired gifts we have. The challenge for all of us is this. To be real models and livers of the Eucharistic spirituality. May God bless us all.